guys, it's Frank from Cruising with Wheels. Welcome back to my kitchen for another episode of Frank's Cooking Corner. What does a crock pot, some chicken, and lots of spices have in common? Well, let me tell you, today we're going to make crock pot chicken fajitas! Now, I've made this recipe before in the crock pot, and it was fantastic. Kevin and I absolutely loved it. And let me tell you, it made a lot of chicken for us. And so there was a lot of extras, and let me tell you, it freezes well. We put it in these Rubbermaid freezer containers, and we had a lot of them in the freezer. And not only that, but I also saved and froze all the extra juices and liquid that was in the crock pot. Because once we were done eating all the actual chicken from the freezer, I pulled out the leftover frozen juice and I cooked up some other chicken and mixed it up. So this recipe goes a long way, at least it did, for the two of us. Now let me tell you, everything you're gonna need to make this recipe. You're gonna need a large crock pot, four chicken breasts, boneless and skinless, two cans of diced tomatoes with green chilies, 10 ounces each, three large peppers, one large onion, four cloves of garlic, two and a half teaspoons of chili powder, two teaspoons of ground cumin, one teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of paprika, three quarters teaspoon of ground coriander, one teaspoon of salt, three quarters teaspoon of ground black pepper, two tablespoons of fresh lime juice, one tablespoon of honey, some eight inch flour fajita tortillas, and lots of garnishments to build and fill your fajita. You can use sour cream, shredded lettuce, some salsa, and some Mexican shredded cheese. Now to get this recipe started, let's get everything prepped. We're gonna need to slice up our onions, julienne cut our peppers, and then we're gonna get all our spices together, measured out, all mixed together in a small bowl. And then once we have all that done, we're gonna to go to our crock pot and we're gonna start layering everything. We're gonna layer all the diced tomatoes with the chicken and the garlic and the spices and everything, onions and peppers and everything that goes in it. Let's get started. We're now getting started by cutting up our vegetables. Now let's start with this giant Vidalia onion. As Kevin would say, I got you an onion. It's as big as your head. Well, gosh, it almost is. Look at this sucker. Holy moly. But you know what? 
It's a big crock pot recipe, so that is good. So, first of all, we need to get the skin off. So let's start cutting the ends off. That's how I usually do it. I get the ends cut off. And I have a little bowl here, and that's where I'm going to throw in all my garbage. So I'm going to set it right here in front of me so I can just pick it up and toss it in. You don't want it all over your counter. So let's get these ends off. And now that I've got the ends off, I can start to peel the skin off. So let's get this off. Get it's a big onion. Ooh, wow. Mm -hmm. You know, I... I don't cry anymore when I'm cutting onions. I wonder if it's like massive years and years of, of cutting onions and now I'm kind of immune to it. It's kind of weird. All right. In our little trash bowl it goes. Out of the way. Keep your cutting board. Clean and neat. Oops. And again, look at that. That core. Yeah, yuck. Get a little bit more of that out. Bye bye. Okay. Now, this is really, it's not going to be, this onion is not going to be a fine chop. This onion is going to have a rough chop to it. Rough chop, large pieces. Okay, so basically I'm just going to cut it in half, set one aside just to get it out of my way, turn it over on the flat side, curve your fingers in. You don't want them like that. Nobody wants to be cutting like that. Always curve them in, hold it down, and again, it's a rough just going to slice it. Yeah, it looks like a quarter of an inch, maybe. You do it as slow as you need to do it, like me. I want to keep my fingers. And of course, I've got that core that piece at the end that everybody hates. So I'm just going to cut around it and get rid of it into my little trash bucket. Alright, so that's half the onion. Now I brought with me a couple of these dishes and I'm going to use this one just to accumulate my onions. So I'm going to pick this up and put them in there because again, I've got to get them all cut up. You see, they're going to get all broken up. And I'm going to be able to, when I build this meal and layer it in the crock pot, I'm going to be able to just grab handfuls and layer it. So let's real quick do the second half. And into my bowl it goes. There. I'm ready to toss and layer when the time comes. Onions complete. Now, I've already started to cut up my peppers. I have a green pepper, a red pepper, and a yellow pepper. Now I've already cut up the red pepper and I've done the best I can to slice julienne style as best I could. Again, remember, I'm not a professional chef, so I'm just going to do the best I can. But how I cut these peppers is first, I need to core this. Let's get the stem out and let's core this pepper. Okay, right, let's cut around it. Pull it out, yucky, into the trash. 
take your big knife and slice it in half. And you see the insides. Yeah, that's got to go. Get your little corning knife and just cut all that out very gently. Cut it out. Put it over your yucky trash bowl. Oop. And dump it. Give it a little, little whack. Get all those seeds out. You want this clean and mean. There's number one. Let's get the second one done. Yeah. Tappity tap. You might have to poke those seeds out with the knife. Some just don't want to come out. There you go. Now let's do the final one. Let's core it. Whoops, come on you. Get out, 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 you don't belong. Cut it in half, using your big knife. This is your slicing julienne knife. Not a lot of uh, seeds and innards of this yellow pepper. So this one's easier to clean. Good. Out, out, out. We don't want seeds. Bad seeds. Bad. All right. Move your trash bowl aside. And now, let's quickly julienne these. Doesn't take long. Thin slices, again. Because this is all going to get loaded in your fajita. With all that chicken. Oh, boy. And onions and all that good stuff. Thin slices. I believe that is the definition. They talk about julianning. We'll look it up. We'll see what the real definition is. As you can see, I've already got the red ones. Let's start loading the green. Because again, when I layer it, I want to get the first layer, all three colored peppers, and then the final layer with three colored peppers. Don't put all your peppers in one basket. So let's finish this up. Fast. Ooh, that was a chubby one. And the yellow ones are very small. Now you'll find in the grocery store that red peppers and yellow peppers and orange peppers or whatever color peppers are so much more expensive. I mean, it's crazy. Here in upstate New York and Rochester, these peppers are like, oh God, they're, it's crazy. It's like $2.99, $3.99 a pound. Isn't that crazy for a pepper? Now the basic green ones, it's a uh, it's like $1.99 a pound. Now that one large green pepper can cost you like 75 cents to a dollar. But gosh, you get one of these babies? Oh, you're paying like two bucks or whatever for a colored pepper. Sometimes it's worth it. It depends on the recipe I'm doing. And I'll tell Kevin, oh, I don't care what color it is. But for the fajitas, you really want the color. All right, there we go. We are done. We are julienne. Get all the rest of this in. And there you go. I am ready to layer my peppers now. Okay, people, now it's time to get all our spices 
measured out into a small bowl. So we've got all these spices. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have eight spices sitting right in front of me. We're going to measure them out uh, following the recipe, get them into the bowl, and get them all whisked together. Because you don't put them in individually. They go in as a family. So let's start with the chili powder. It calls for two and a half teaspoons of chili powder. And of course, I've got all my little measuring spoons here, so let me get them all set aside and set out. Two and a half teaspoons. So let me get my teaspoon. And I've got one, two, and there's the half. Done. Set aside. Next is ground cumin. Is it cumin or cumin? I'm not sure which. Comment below. And they need about two teaspoons of that. So let's get the little teaspoon. And we've got one and two. Set aside, you're done. The next one is the onion powder. Now that's just one teaspoon. I'm going to wipe this. We don't want to get our old spices on our new spices. So onion powder is one. There you go. And wipe. Set aside. Garlic powder, one. Set aside. Wipe. Paprika, ooh, paprika, one tablespoon. Set aside and wipe. Uh, ground coriander, ooh, now that's something I usually don't keep in my cupboard my spice cover, but again, I bought it a while back because I made this recipe. And here I am making it yet again. Now, as you can see, this is called ground coriander, three quarters of a teaspoon. So I'm going to get, there's my little half teaspoon. There's half and my quarter teaspoon. And that makes it three quarters. Set aside and done. Last, I have one teaspoon of salt. Let's get it in here. Oops. Who was that? There you go. Set it aside. And I have three quarters teaspoon of pepper. And again, oh, it's, it's a little thing. So let's start with the half. And gently... Just the half in there. There's half and the final one quarter to make it three quarter teaspoon. Done. There you go. We've got them. All the spices are in. And again, this is what makes it. And they want you to whisk it all up. It's all got to be mixed together. Nothing is put in separately. It is done as a beautiful bouquet of spices. Eight wonderful spices whisked together. There you go. Alrighty. Set it aside until we're ready to start layering all our ingredients into the crock pot. Now that we have everything prepared, everything sliced up, measured out, and ready to go, let's get over to the crock pot and start layering it and hit that button. Because I'm going to do it today, uh, uh, a high cook for four hours. Because you know, Kevin's going to be hungry and he is not going to want to wait endless amount of time. So, let's get going. Alrighty, well here we are. We are now ready to actually layer this crock pot and get these chicken fajitas going on their four hour slow cook. As you can see, there's all our ingredients. 
All ready to go in. We just got to go. Oh, look at that big old crock pot. Okay, so what is first on our list? Well, first on the list is we have to pour one can of the diced tomatoes with the green chilies on the bottom. Ooh, that was awesome. Okay, now spread it around. Make a nice little even layer. Okay, that's done. Top with one half of the peppers and half of the onions. So I'm going to take half of the yellow orange ones. Ooh, half of the green. Oh my god. There you go. Isn't that pretty? Okay, oh, don't forget the onions. Holy moly. We don't want to forget that. So let's, let me grab my onions. I can get them over here real quick. Oh, there's lots of onions. Holy do. Okay. Oh, yeah. Isn't that nice? Okay, so now that that's all in, you're going to top it with um, the chicken breasts. Where are they? <gasps> there they are. Okay, let's one at a time. And you're supposed to get them all in there. Ooh, they're kind of chubby. Two. I remember last time I had to really pack it. Oh, this one's a big one. Yeah, baby. I think I'm going to... Yeah, here, watch me. Oh, kind of move them around. Yeah, that's a little better. Ah, you little suckers. Okay, now that those uh, little fat babies are in there, you are now ready to sprinkle half of the spice seasonings over the chicken. So let me just see if I can do this. Hold the camera and sprinkle. Coat the chicken. I think that was half. I'm going to say that's half. Let's set that aside. And I'm going to gently give it a rub. Sprinkle it around, sprinkle it around, sprinkle it around. Pat it down, pat it down, pat it down. And then you've got to flip it over. So flip it over. You why? You want to know why? Because we want to make sure that the spices get on both sides. And I'm going to sprinkle the rest of this awesome seasoning. Oh, if you were just here, you could really... Oh, wow, that's a lot. I might have to reflip. I don't think I was doing very well with my half and half. Don't you think? Me cooking is trial and error. Let me get the rest of this. I do want to make sure it's evenly done. Everybody gets... Okay, thank you. Okay, so now we are ready to top with the second can of tomatoes. Alrighty. Here we go. Let me pull back a bit so you can see. Da -da 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 -da. Ooh, nice. Awesome. Ooh, my can almost fell on the floor. Get in there. And then guess what's after that? What is after the tomatoes? Well, we have to do the rest of the peppers and onions. So, let me focus right here in the crock pot. And now I can just kind of dump the remaining peppers. Let me pull back a bit. Oh, isn't that, it's just so pretty. This is why you have to get the colors. And now let's do the final remainder. Oh. oh, before I put that in, hold on now. I have got to add my garlic. Don't want to forget the garlic. Now, it says four cloves of garlic. So if you had fresh garlic, you do four cloves. Well, I don't have fresh garlic, but I now use uh, garlic that's already minced up and in a jar. 
So I've minced garlic in a jar and it's in water, not oil. Now four cloves is equivalent to two tablespoons. So I'm just going to grab a little jar. Ooh, that's a lot, but that's okay. We like garlic. There's one. Let's get that all in there. And now let's get the second. I think I was supposed to have put this in uh, over the chicken. But again, it's all going to cook together. So it will all cook. It will all mix. Finally, let's get the rest of these onions in here. Now you see why you have to have a big crock pot? There is a reason for this. Okay, there you go. So let us recap. As we build this crock pot chicken fajita dinner, we have already poured the one can of tomatoes into the bottom of the crock pot. We spread it into an even layer. We topped it with half of the peppers and half of the onions. I was supposed to have shoved my minced garlic then, but hey, I forgot. Uh, you top it with the chicken breasts. You sprinkle your spices on the chicken on both sides. Then you top with the second can of tomatoes, layering with the remaining half of the peppers and onions. I am ready to now cover this Wonderful recipe. Ooh, nice. Are you ready? And I have selected the, let's get here. Let's look at it. See, it's plugged in and ready. And cooking time, I'm doing the high four hour. That's what I have selected. And there you go. So it's about one in the afternoon. And this will be done at 5 p.m. and that'll give me time between 5 and 5 30 um, to pull the chicken out and uh, cut it and shred it and do whatever I have to do. But for now it's ready to rock and roll. Let's say goodbye and I'll see you in four hours. Our four hours is up and we're ready to remove the chicken, get it on a platter, and start shredding it up and getting it back into the crock pot with a little lime juice, a little more honey, and some salt. We'll let it sit a bit before Kevin and I pull it out and start stuffing our fat little faces. Okay, we are ready to get the chicken out of the crock pot. It has cooked slow for four hours, and let's see what it looks like. Ooh, it's been smelling delicious most of the day. Yummy! So first I'm going to just get my giant fork and I'm going to pull the chicken out one by one and I'm just going to put it here in my little bowl. Okay, there's four pieces. If you all remember, in that fourth one, I'm going to put right here. Ooh, wow, that's nice. It's good to see it's falling apart. This, this is the one I'm going to start with, and I'm going to start shredding it. That's why I got my big old fork. So you just get it and just kind of, oh, look at that. It literally is just falling apart. And that's all you have to do is just cut it up, shred it as much as you can. Slow cooking makes the chicken nice and tender. And this is looking good and smelling good. So we'll continue and I'll do the remaining three pieces and we'll continue on from there. All right, so we have finished, as you can see, shredding the chicken. Those are four large cooked chicken breasts all cut up and shredded. So the next step is Remove one ladle of juice. So let's get a ladle of juice out. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give me some of that. Yeah, okay, set it aside. You don't want it, okay? And now we're ready to do the final mixture, which is we're going to get two tablespoons of lime juice in a bowl. There's one. Ooh, I'm splashing away. Yep, it's Splash Academy here. There's two. Done. Set it aside. And then we're going to get one tablespoon of honey. Mm. So let's squeeze it. Oh, yeah, squeeze it out. Why don't you tell them their, your trick about the honey? Yeah, you know, sometimes... I, oh, I love this. Oh, wait, wait. I love the smell of honey. You know, honey lasts for a little more than a lifetime. You know, they found honey in the pyramids buried with the pharaohs. It was still good to eat. But anyways, yeah, sometimes this gets a little hard. You know, it sits in the cupboard. I zapped it in the microwave for about 15 seconds, and it's all nice and loose and warm. And so there you go. Little trick there. So now, once you've got that in, you're gonna give it a quick whisk. That's all. Just whisk it up. Again, everything has to be blended. Lime juice and honey. There, very good. Okay. And then you just, you pour it back into your crock pot. Ooh, yummy. Ooh. Lovely. We're going to give it a little toss. Mix it up. And now, put your chicken back in. I think I'll save each bowl, one for Cece and one for Delilah. That'll be their chicken dinner. Let's get the second bowl in. Now let's really mix this up. Now you can see why I told you when we started this recipe, this is a lot of food. And this lasted, uh, Kevin and myself, a really long time. Uh, remember I told you it froze very well. Very, very well. We enjoyed chicken fajitas for quite some time. And I want to make sure that that lime juice and that honey is really getting incorporated into this chicken. So there you go. And now I'm going to put the cover back on. And I'm going to let it sit there, kind of marinate for about 10 minutes while Kevin and I get the table set and ready to eat. All right. So we've got the table set. And everybody might like their fajitas or fajitas, as Frank likes to call them, a little bit differently. But we typically get lettuce and shredded ourselves, some... Um, I think that's Mexican. It's a mix. <laughs> some Mexican blended cheeses. Uh, we get some sour cream from our local Wegmans. And uh, we skip the tomatoes because we do a salsa. We tend to do mild salsa. It's already got the tomatoes, the onions, the spice, the sauce, everything you need. Uh, in here, we put the we put the uh, crock pot right on our kitchen island because that's where we eat most of the time. And oh yeah, I'm gonna give me some of that. So uh, the peppers and onions and chicken are all mixed. We have an eight inch fajita wrap that you can get pretty much anywhere at any local place, uh, local supermarket. I do want to tell you guys that the first time we did this, I loaded it up with chicken. Do you remember that, Frank? Yes. I loaded it up with chicken and peppers and all these good things, but the wrap is only eight inches, <laughs> so you really don't need a ton because now I'm going to put in a little bit of cheeses, probably a little bit more of cheeses. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna be nice, I'm just gonna take a big glop 
of that. And you know what? We forgot to put a fork on for the salsa. I mean, an, a spoon for right the there. salsa. Right there. Well, that's for sour cream. Oh, goodness. You can't double dip because I'm going to use the sour cream. What am I going to use the sour cream on? I have no idea. My baked potato. Look at baked potato. I have two baked potatoes yes, in the do. refrigerator. That's true. For another dinner soon to come. Right. Oh, oh, look, it's fresh. It's fresh, so I got to mix it up. Oh, yeah, Margaret. It's delicious, Margaret. And you see, I like to have it. Okay, this is my tip for everybody. I like to spread it out because um, those of you that go to Taco Bell or where else is where else we go? Chipotle? Chipotle. Oh, yeah. Chipotle. Chipotle and Taco Bell, they dump all the sour cream at one end, and it pisses me off because it needs to be sour cream dispu distributed, distrib distributed, distributed distributed throughout. And then... Oh, we're wrapping. We're wrapping. Well, but I can't. You must. Well, I, I can, but I always fold up one, and then Pretend I fold the you're other. you're wrapping a present and then for I your do. mouth. And then I do that, but it's I'm gonna get all leaky now. Aww. I'm gonna eat a piece. I don't care you're filming. Uh -uh. Oh. Mmm. Mmm, it's warm. That's good. But you forgot to put napkins on the table. Oops. But, I think that was your job. But that's all right because now you gotta make yours and we gotta eat. Okay, so that's it. And as you can see, my chicken fajita is ready for me to fold and eat. And yes, we got the napkins. I'm prepared. I want to thank all of you for joining me uh, for this episode of Frank's Cooking Corner. I hope that this recipe works as well for you as it does for us. And on behalf of Kevin and myself from Cruising with Wheels, Remember, if you're not in the kitchen cooking up a storm and you're on the high seas, remember, travel safe and cruise often. Hey, no! <laughs> I'm being told currently what I need to go get him. And I'm supposed to go get the big pink label and he's now gonna yell at me because it's in the other drawer. See, right on cue, people. It's in the other drawer. Not my job. This is behind the scenes of Frank's Cooking Corner. We're bringing you in because tonight I am having chicken fajitas, baby. <laughs> Are you recording already? I'm hungry! God, don't worry about the dog! Are you ready to eat now? <laughs> what have you got? Ooh, look at this! Well, all I need now is Hansel and Gretel to finish this meal. 